Uh, what you got going on here? We got a brand new gaming PC build for all of the new gaming releases this year. Because it's the holidays, you know, it's that time of year. Mm, well, what, what releases are you excited about? Well, they've got a, a Assassin's Creed is coming out. Oh, but that's got uh, like four different DRMs. I don't know. I don't think we should support that. Call of Duty, which is like the 14-year-old's uh, paradise. Call of Duty's uh, pay-to-win multiplayer, though. I mean, that's, I don't know. We should probably not get that one. Uh, what about Shadow of War? Oh, that's uh, I mean, single-player pay-to-win. That, that might be worse. I mean, it, it I kind of destroys love... Tolkien, but... Yeah, so yeah, we'll probably skip that one. Yeah. And what, what about Star Wars? The new Star Wars Battlefront game. Uh, come on. 600,000 downvotes and counting. Maybe not. Well, maybe we could just play some more PUBG with this machine. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm looking at your parts here. I'm thinking maybe we shave like one, two frames per second. Add it to our PUBG. Our PUBG yeah. time. I think it's totally it's worth, worth it. it. Let's do it. So here we are with our extreme gamer build completed. Uh, it we... looks pretty extreme. <laughs> well, I actually, I do kind of actually like that part. It's That's cool. the case is attractive. The white, something different. That's you know RGB. You love it or you hate it, I guess. I, I really, I don't feel too strongly about it. I think the RGB in this case makes it feel a lot better because I think, but without it, it just kind of seems sort of plain because it's matte white. But with the inlay and stuff, it looks cool. Now we do have a couple of complaints about this case. Uh, number one being the shroud. It's, it's cosmetic, yeah, people, I guess it adds something to the side view, but it makes working on the bottom of this motherboard really annoying. Putting in the front panel stuff, uh, all the USB and the controls and everything, terrible experience with that shroud on there. The other thing is uh, you can see the scratches we had to the dents. adjust the shroud to fit this cooler in there. 280 millimeter cooler doesn't fit in this case unless you want to destroy it. After you destroy it, 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 it I mean, it technically, anything can technically fit. We only got two mounting screws in it even after we made our modifications. So uh, maybe not ideal. A couple other small problems we had. The grommets in the back for cable management, very loose. Yeah. Basically yeah. you just, you touch them and they fall out. They're halfway in, halfway out right now. And we didn't even really go extreme on this cable management. You can see it's, we didn't go crazy with it and those things didn't work out too well. So some minor annoyances, uh, the, the management of the uh, PCI cards here in the back, they got this little, you know, big clamp that goes down. Not crazy about that. I guess maybe if you're moving cards in and out a lot, save you a little time. But other than that, pretty decent case. Now we have discovered that this is retailing for $90 right now. We were told initially that it was gonna retail for around 60, and I think that influenced our original review. We might rate yeah. it a little bit lower knowing the price now. So increasing the price by 50% definitely changes your, you know, whether or not we would recommend it. For $90, meh, uh, we're much, uh, much more in the middle on this case yeah. rather than recommending it. So, uh, airflow is decent once you cram in the cooler where it doesn't want to go. And it's got, you know, some of the nice little things like the magnetic strips and the uh, dust vents and stuff like that is fine. But overall, not the most pleasant build. All right, the Extreme Gamer, the Screeching Gamer. The uh, 8700K is the CPU we got in there. We actually got that to five gigahertz. We got the H115i cooler. Of course, we had to really cram it in there, but hey, it's working and it's keeping it cool enough to hit five gigahertz. Uh, for the motherboard, we have the Z370 Gaming M5, which is a MSI motherboard. And then for our graphics card, which is probably the best part of the build, we have the uh, 1080 Ti. With the, it's the Gaming Trio, and it's got three fans in it, so it keeps it nice and cool. For RAM and storage, we've got ADATA XPG for both of those. We have 256 gigabytes of NVMe and 16 gigs of RAM. Plenty for our gaming needs. And of course this case, which we have mixed feeling about, <laughs> is the Enzo from BitPhoenix. So we've done two builds in the Enzo to test the thermals and it really, it doesn't, <laughs> um, 
we can't recommend it for an i7 build. The, the only build that we can really recommend for this case is like a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 3 build where we're talking about around 150 watts of heat for the whole system. It's primarily, or it's all a problem with the airflow. And we tried several different configurations. Taking the front off, if you're willing to take the front off, then maybe, but why would you be willing to take the front off of You remove the all the lighting at that point. But the lighting, it's so amazing. Yeah, those LEDs, and that's why you bought it, right? So it's hard to recommend this case, even if you're just building the Ryzen system with a crappy video card. Do you never want to upgrade? Because any, if the next generation comes out, it generates a lot of heat, you're going to be throwing this thing away. Yeah, the, uh, we tried with foam, we tried moving around the 120 millimeter coolers, and in all cases, the temperature was really high. It turns out that pulling the air in from the bottom is a little bit problematic. And this is for our i7 system. Now, for the Ryzen system, where the system doesn't produce nearly as much heat as the Intel i7, uh, it's a little bit more functional, it works a little bit better, but uh, you know we didn't run into any throttling or anything like that at stock speeds, but we feel like that there are other cases at uh, the same price point that will give you a better experience. This case really should be more like a 40 or $50 case, and even in that scenario, we wouldn't recommend it for anything beyond a 200 watt, 250 watt system. And you have to remember that we thought this was gonna be a $60 case. We're seeing it for as much as 90, and for $90, you can do a lot better.